families are finally seeing that there, there's something beyond the, the Disney nonsense. We saw Strange World lose a ton of money. We saw Lightyear become one of the biggest disasters ever. There's no reason a movie based on Light Buzz Lightyear should fail unless you're Disney and you're ruining your perception with families. I think it lost even more money. So for Lightyear and Strange World, they did a whole breakdown. Deadline did the biggest box office bombs and they put the entire okay, yeah. profit loss sheet. The problem is for all these movies now, this is a streaming thing in general. It used to be you put a movie out and, uh, you know, you're going to get licensed to have it play on TNT or whatever. And also you sell it to a streaming platform, Netflix, Prime Video, whatever it may be. And you could get a bunch of money as a studio by doing that. Yep. Now they are counting money for light year. I think it was 90 or 95 million dollars. No Disney is way. counting that as revenue for them no because Disney way. paid themselves 90 million dollars <laughs> yep. for light year yeah. to put on. On Disney Plus, yeah, and they're no counting that towards way. the profits for the movie. No fucking way. No, yeah. it doesn't matter. There's no way they were selling 95 million in fucking Blu-rays if they try. No way they were recouping those fees. Just for reference, so everybody knows kind of what we're talking about here. This is the the profit and loss sheets we're talking about. This is specifically for Strange World. Okay, yeah, this is nonsense. So it, it is nonsense and. We'll get into it. So they're saying, hey, here's the box office revenue, 37 million, 35 million for a total worldwide of 73 million. Fucking pathetic, by the way. This is what we talk about all the time, how the revenues that, that they actually see are not exactly what the box office is, a little bit less than half of what the total worldwide box office actually is. They're mm -hmm. saying they got $35 million back to the studio mm -hmm. from that $73.5 million worldwide. They're also saying $30 million in revenue from home entertainment. Now, that's selling DVDs and Blu-rays, um, video on demand rentals, things like that, or people like actually buying it on their iTunes. That all counts for home entertainment. So 30 million, okay, if you say so, I guess. 55 million for television slash no streaming. Way. No Nobody, it's way. not on TV, no. okay? So you're just talking about streaming. <laughs> no that means way. that Disney Plus paid $55 million to Disney for the rights to stream <laughs> their Disney movie. <laughs> right, that's it. And, and that's yeah. what, this is funny money. Now, in theory, is it supposed to work that way because they are probably separate entities? Okay, yeah, sure. But that that's just mixing around the money. Mm -hmm. It's not like it's it was laundry. back in the day to sell <laughs> that to fucking Netflix he and actually make $55 money. million. Dollars. That's laundry, <laughs> man. Yeah, I mean, that's that's what we've been talking about uh, on my channel for a while now, you know, kind of monitoring the, the changes and the, the, the shifts and patterns with these studios and how they do these post-theatrical pay one windows, these these releases to PVOD, these different windows that they traditionally had. Now, to Deadline's credit, They've been creating these, you know, winners and losers uh, top 10 things now for quite a while. They didn't have one for 2020, obvious reasons. They didn't have one for 2021, obvious reasons. So they just got back to it. So you can go back to like 2019, 18, 17, 16. You'll find these articles on Deadline. The formula that they use, like Ryan was talking about with the PVOD, the home entertainment, physical media sales, and then onto the pay one window which is now basically collapsed into streaming for most people. That worked up until a point. But of course, in 2019, a lot of these companies just threw a switch, especially Disney, and started consuming all of their own product. They weren't farming it out anymore. And that's what we've been tracking. So to say that, first of all, I don't believe for a second that Strange World did $30 million in home entertainment at all. You're no telling way. me that they somehow uh, you know, collected 50% of home entertainment based on a ratio to their theatrical sales? No way. Bullshit. There's nope. no way. They put these in the charts because they've been doing it this way for years. So they say, yeah, they had. we estimate the streaming revenue to be X. But yes, as Ryan correctly pointed out, that is, as we've been saying for a while, that's Disney paying itself. Now, that doesn't work when it's a movie that Disney also produced in-house and distributed in-house, right? So that's, it's Fugazi. It's just moving money from the right pocket to the left pocket. The only time that actually works is for a company like Paramount and a movie like Top Gun. Or another good example coming up would be Disney when it comes to the case of Avatar or Avatar 2 because when they, when they stroke that check for the streaming rights to go to Disney+, Plus, yes, Part of that is Disney putting money from right to left pocket, but a big chunk of that check is going to go to Lightstorm and James Cameron, just as a big chunk of the check for Top Gun Maverick, even though it was distributed by Paramount. A lot of that's going to go to Skydance and to Tom Cruise, and Tom Cruise basically personally made more money off of Top Gun Maverick than Disney did with Pixar, Disney Animation, and Marvel Studios combined last year. <laughs> oh <my God>. Whoa. <laughs> 